<laughs> Hi, Jason. <laughs> we just got a, a welcome from Jason Adamani. Jason. You're on mute, Mike. You can't hear you. <laughs> So we'll wait just a couple more minutes too, because I know people are still logging on. So just uh, bear with us. Looks like we're up to 21 people so far. I think we had. Mike, I think everyone online would like to hear you sing some karaoke while they're waiting. No, I don't think they want that. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Joyce in the house yet? We had, um, I, I can't remember how many registered, quite a few registered, but now you're competing with Sun, which is great. There's, hi Alicia. <laughs> Does not look like Joyce is logged on yet. <laughs> yeah, Alicia wants you to sing, Mike. There's the man. <laughs> Is there a way to do a poll on here and who wants to hear Mike sing? <laughs> okay, so it's um, two o'clock. I think we'll go ahead and get started. We had um, quite a few people register today. We might be competing with the sun, as I mentioned <laughs> today in the afternoon. Um, but we also will be recording this presentation, so it'll be available uh, in various outlets, and in addition to the slide deck, will be available. So, uh, I would like to welcome everybody today. Thank you for joining us. We are happy to see. We are we are happy you can see us. We hope to see you soon. Um, we know that all of you are finding ways to adapt and innovate as best as you possibly can during this time. And most importantly, we hope that everyone is um, their families, their teams are healthy and safe. A couple of quick notes. We will keep the presentation to an hour today, and we have time for questions at the end. So you can use your little Q&A feature at the bottom of your dashboard to submit questions, and we will get to as many of those as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Uh, the Chamber has been sharing as many connections and resources as we possibly can through, through this time. Various outlets, our weekly communication, we have a COVID resource page on our website that's received quite a bit of traffic and we continue to update that daily. Um, we've also been supporting our local businesses through our social outlets and I just like to take 30 seconds here to mention um, a note of gratitude for supporting Fitchburg businesses during this time. Uh, every takeout, curbside pickup, delivery, Online shopping that you've been doing with our local Fitchburg businesses has really been appreciated. Uh, we will continue to um, encourage you to support them as we move through to this recovery period. Also, as we begin to reopen our economy, the Chamber will be taking the lead on setting up a Fitchburg uh, economic recovery team in collaboration with our city partners. This team will just provide some leadership through the recovery period uh, through what, what will be certainly an adaptation period and hopefully soon an advancement of our economy. Um, we'll have more about that, more information about that in the near future. But in the meantime, as I mentioned, uh, we know that so many of you and your businesses have been adapting and, and really looking for ways to innovate, uh, new ways of doing business in what might be a new normal for a while for us. And if during this process of um, innovation and adaptation, you are encountering obstacles and or notice some opportunities and you need some assistance with that, we really encourage you to give us a call. You can give me a call at the chamber. You can call Mike Z 
at the Fitchburg Economic Development Department, and we will certainly try to assist you in whatever ways we can. So with that, uh, there are projects that are moving forward in Fitchburg, and we all want to look forward right now. So we thought it'd be a good time to share with you an economic development update about what's happening in the city. So I would like to welcome Mayor Aaron Richardson to this afternoon's presentation. All right, thank you. I know that Mike is going to be doing slides for me here. I, like he said, uh, mayor, I've been mayor for a year and the election that we just had was uh, elected again for three more years. So I'll be around for a little while longer. During the election, we actually had three new alders get elected as well. The district one has Joe Maldonado, he's new there. District two, Gabriella Gerhardt, and in district four, we have Randy Udell. Now, throughout this whole coronavirus uh, response, we have reduced the meetings that we're doing as a city, but it, we have been uh, keeping up on things like the council, finance, plan commission, public works. Those are all things that we thought are really important, especially for the business community, because projects aren't slowing down. If you drive around the city, you'll see that there's a lot of construction still happening. It's going to continue to happen. And we didn't want to slow that down and be the reason why some of those slowed down. The maybe nice thing about some of the projects we talk about, and especially some of the road construction, is that there's not as many people on the road. So that makes it safer for those building those roads. And we're hoping it maybe will speed it up a little bit anyway. It might be a week or two, but you know, it does enable us to get out there a lot safer anyway. Uh, you can see right here the contact information for all of your elected officials and contact information that's all on our website. This is taken right from our website. Feel free to reach out to any of us. Uh, we are starting to do some other meetings here and there where necessary, but uh, really the key is if there's something important, we want to meet and want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to help the people in our community to keep those things moving. So uh, I will move on to talk about some of those great projects. Uh, road construction, you, you know, haven't driven as much as you had in the past maybe, but if you've been down Fish Hatchery Road, you've been over on the Key Road, you've seen these things are starting right now. And you can keep up to date. If you haven't signed up for updates, we do have a spot on our website where you can log in and get emails for updates on these projects. A lot happening on there and you can get those updates as well. You can also follow the Fishburg Transportation Projects on Facebook and Twitter. You can go to FACT TV's YouTube page to get weekly updates that they record on there. Many of you are familiar with Cindy Yagi, who was instrumental in the Verona Road Business Coalition and helping us get through that project. She's helping us with Fish Hatcher Road as well. That's another project that's gonna have a big impact on a lot of businesses. I wanna make sure that we have the resources for those people that they really need. So we've gotten her contracted to help us out with that project, so I'm excited about that. She's great, many of you know her and know how great she is as well. And so that's uh, exciting. So I'll talk a little bit about a few of the projects here. The first one is Fish Hatchery Road, North Fish Hatchery Road. We actually have some updated pictures just from the other day on there. You can see that they've already taken a lot of blacktop off of one half of Fish Hatchery Road. Uh, it started out April 1st, doing a lot of great things already. This year, we're reconstructing from the very northern part of our city up Greenway Cross, Beltline area, all the way down through Traceway Drive. And so and we're putting in some new intersections, new lights, making it a lot safer, hopefully, as well. But uh, we're doing that part this year. Next year, we will then go from Traceway South all the way down to McKee Road and reconstructing the intersection of McKee Road a little bit as well. So we're kind of do one half, uh, get that done, move all the traffic over to that, then do the other half. So that's a big project uh, starting already in, in progress. and. We'll have some impacts obviously on traffic, but something that's very well needed. And I think a lot of the additions are really gonna be good when those are done. The next project that I wanna talk about a little bit is Pike Drive. And that's also on this North Fish Hatchery Road area. We are extending that and installing a traffic light there as well. 
And so along with the road extension, making this safer, we're also addressing some stormwater concerns in that area. There's been flooding when we've had major storms on Green Bay Cross, Fish Hatchie Road, and we're hoping that some of these additions will also take care of some of those concerns as well. So again, not only making the road a lot nicer because it was pretty beat up, but also making it safer. That's really a big key for this as well. And there's already been a lot of development on this road and there's more that is coming. And so we hope that this helps spur even more of that development. The key road is the next kind of major project happening already in progress. In fact, my guess is that even though these pictures were taken this weekend and they might already be out of date, uh, it's really the final part of Verona Road, even though Verona Road's done, this is another piece of that as far as I'm concerned. Doing a lot of different things here. The interchange with Verona Road is obviously a big part of that, but also adding some turn lanes, going all the way through Commerce Park, you know, improving that, and actually we'll go all the way to the intersection with Seminole Highway and improving that intersection as well. Uh, right now, the, if you have, are familiar with it, which I'm sure many of you are, the Seminole Highway, once you go north of McKee Road, drops off pretty dramatically. One of the things that we're doing is really kind of, I guess, leveling that off a little bit so that it's safer, you can see better there. And so when the lights go, right now, the Seminole Highway kind of staggers northbound and southbound, or well, maybe southbound and the northbound, we'll be able to actually have both sides going at the same time with those improvements. So should be able to move traffic through there a little bit quicker as well. They are doing a lot on this already. This weekend, they are shutting down the Commerce Park intersection uh, starting at noon Friday tomorrow and then going overnight to do some severe reconstruction of that intersection and get it done really quickly so it can get done. Uh, it sounds like they're going to have it done by the end of the day Saturday. I think it's going to be you know, just over 24 hours, but a huge change that you'll see just this weekend on the Commerce Park uh, piece. Along with the uh, McKee Road, there will be some detours. Uh, talk a little about Commerce Drive. Uh, you can see it's a little bit here on where that is. Uh, another key piece actually in this area of Commerce Park, McKee Road, that I think I'm really excited about personally is the bike trail that crosses McKee Road is going to become a bike bridge. That's gonna be a huge uh, improvement, I think, because it's gonna be a lot safer for everyone involved. I've talked to a few people that have gotten rear-ended in that area. We'll be able to eliminate those because some people stop for the bikes and some people don't. Now the bikes can go over the top of it, don't have to worry about that, makes it a lot safer. And so very excited about that. And that will just increase, I think, the use of the Badger State Trail as well. Going on, a lot of other construction in the area. Fahey Glen extension is another one that I want to talk about. And that is connecting Lacey Road to East Sherrill, right next to Hospice Care. And that's, you can see some of the recent pictures here. That's going to be a huge improvement for hospice and access in that area. I know that there's a lot of events that happen on East Sherrill, and traditionally it made, it's made getting into hospice very difficult, but hospice will have an access to their parking lot off of this extension, and that's gonna be a huge improvement for people to be able to get to hospice when things are happening, like the art fair, hopefully, uh, Burby Derby, all these things that hopefully continue this year, and if they don't, next year we'll get them back anyway. Uh, but it's, I think, a, a great improvement. Um, it really is going to help with ProMega expansion as well. Other projects, you know, the map, you really can't read that, but a number of other things going on. One of those might be, I can talk about is over on the intersection of MM and Lacey Road, I consider the new part of Lacey Road, we are putting in stoplights. And so that's to gain access to Terabessa and that's going to improve safety tremendously there. The county helped participate in the cost of doing that, and that will enable people to get in and out of that neighborhood a lot easier. There's already 25 houses under construction, more that will be built this year. The school is going like gangbusters. It's looking really great. 
that's going to be open this weekend or not this weekend, sorry, this fall for the new school year. Mariposa is very far along. They hope to open uh, late summer, early fall as well. That's very far along. And so very excited about all the things happening in the city. And when you look at all the construction that's happening, all the homes getting built, people love being here. More people are coming here, a lot of growth. And so very excited about all those pieces as well. And I think that's all that Mike let me talk about this time anyway. So I will now turn it over to him for now and available for questions later. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mayor Richardson. And it's nice to be with you all virtually today. I hope your family and friends and colleagues are all safe and healthy. Uh, Joyce and I are well and still working via email and voicemail. Uh, so let us know if we can be of any assistance to you. Uh, thanks to Angela and the Fitchburg Chamber Visitor Business Bureau team for organizing this Fitchburg Focus and for all their communication updates on the stimulus programs and helping to get that information out to our Fitchburg businesses so you can access them. The hardest part about being safer at home is not getting together in person. So since we've been safer at home, we thought we would bring a visual economic development update to you so you can see the progress of our development projects. Uh, Fitchburg is fortunate to at least have building and road construction activity that continues during this crisis that hopefully provides at least a minimal economic lifeline to our other businesses in the community like restaurants and hotels until we can return to some level of new normal economic activity. On the next screen, you can see our building permit construction activity and prior to COVID-19 and the health and economic crisis, Pittsburgh experienced a record level of building activity in 2019 at 433 million. Now, this activity was driven by major projects by our existing businesses, apartment construction, and a healthy number of single family uh, permits. The economy has changed obviously, and unfortunately our record low unemployment is probably now in double digits as layoffs have occurred with some of our large employers and many of our small businesses are shut down or have dramatically reduced their operations during Safer at Home. However, during this time, Fitchburg's diverse business base helps us kind of weather that storm uh, with companies like Yahara Bay switching to hand sanitizer production, Brown Sales developing their own face mask product, Sarah Cycling hiring more employees to keep up with the home fitness equipment demand, Playcon providing packaging for PPE, and Promega Manufacturing Reagents and Supplies for the COVID test round the clock. Plus our restaurants have ramped up quickly to offer pickup and delivery and our Fitchburg hotels are open and operating. So please direct any business that you can their way. As Mayor Richardson articulated, the city of Fitchburg is focused on keeping the development pipeline open and the approval process going via virtual meetings. And moving that forward economic activity while using our various plans and vision documents to guide the quality of these projects. Our Fitchburg Planning Department colleagues are finalizing the major comp plan update that was approved by the Common Council in March of this year. Fitchburg's comprehensive plan, the new documents, the blue one on the right there, guides where we grow and how much. And then our new land use plan map on the far right directs the uses within the urban service area. Next up in the planning department will be the minor comp plan process uh, for 2020. The next slide shows the inventory of our vacant land, which currently is about approximately 1200 acres within the urban service area. That enables us to accommodate growth throughout the city geographically. We also have multiple areas within the city where we're also focused on redevelopment and reinvestment. In collaboration with our partners at the Fitchburg Chamber, Another vision document that guides our development is the Forward Fitchburg City in Motion Economic Development Strategic Plan. That plan calls for building places and spaces along our three main north-south corridors. On the west side of Fitchburg, Verona Road, down the center, Fish Hatchery Road, and then on the east side with the Fitchburg Technology Neighborhood along Highway 14. Because of the development projects we had in our pipeline prior to COVID, we have some development activity occurring along each of these three corridors. Fitchburg does recognize though that even with the economic growth we've experienced prior to COVID, 
that not all of our residents have benefited from our economic growth and now are probably even in greater need. On Tuesday night, the council approved the Healthy Neighborhoods grants that have been in existence for the last couple of years uh, to help support various community organizations and the needs of our community. We continue to implement the vision for the Fitchburg Technology Neighborhood uh, with its mixed use employment centers and targeted industry clusters. Our economic diversification is even more important as we focus on how to hasten our economic recovery. Are there economic opportunities from this crisis with reshoring of manufacturing or supply chains for which Fitchburg is well positioned? Some of our businesses have already responded with new products or expanded production capacity to fill gaps that COVID has exposed in our healthcare system and our economy as we combat this pandemic. Are there new businesses needed for health and safety protocols in the new normal? These are all things that hopefully the economic recovery team Angela referenced will look to to uh, see what opportunities are available to Fitchburg. The foundation for the Fitchburg Technology Neighborhood Vision really began with Promega Corporation and Fitchburg Center, and they continue to accelerate their production capacity on their existing campus uh, for the test kit supplies during this pandemic, so we're fortunate to have them. Promega's latest building expansion on their campus is a $190 million, 270,000 square foot R&D facility. This is Fitchburg's highest valued building project ever and was the fourth largest WEDC project in the state of Wisconsin. It also was recognized by the Wisconsin Economic Development Association as the 2019 Business Retention Expansion Project of the Year. Our Fitchburg Technology Campus is home to another group of diverse businesses that balances our economic activity. It is also home to our new Venture Center buildings that provide accelerator space for various science and technology oriented companies. During this time of safer at home with remote work, Zoom meetings like the, the one we're on today and online education, the TDS1 NEC Data Center and Techlands is a tremendous asset, not only for our community, but the greater Madison region and the state of Wisconsin. There are plans to double the size of the one NEC Data Center with the first phase to possibly start in 2020. So we're looking forward to that. We also have certified and Wisconsin shovel ready sites available for science and tech companies that may be looking for a location as we start the economic recovery. The Uptown Fitchburg area, the 400 acres between US Highway 14 and Syene Road, now has its first corporate anchor with Phoenix who specializes in neutron imaging. We welcome them with a ribbon cutting at their first building last fall and are looking forward to the completion of their headquarters currently under construction just off Lacey Road. We were expecting to see plans from a healthcare anchor this summer, but we realized there will probably be adjustments on the timing and the scale of that project based on the current economic conditions and uncertainty. So we'll keep you updated on that as we get more information and learn plans from them. However, in Uptown, multifamily construction still continues with the 71 unit Osprey apartments currently under construction. And the Addison apartments also continue to build out the rest of their apartment units on the complex at uh, Sying Road and Lacey Road. Once there are sufficient rooftops and the trade ring fills in, we still expect commercial businesses will follow in Uptown, although that will depend on the pace and strength of the economic recovery. Uptown Crossing is nearing full build out with the last of the 60 single family homes, the 18 townhomes and the completion of the apartment construction. This is also the home of our east side fire station. The Central Park Place extension will open up additional land for more single family homes on the east side of the railroad tracks and for commercial development on the north side of Uptown as we continue to build out this complete neighborhood. Long Highway 14 in Rimrock Road, the Novation Campus is currently in the town of Madison, uh, but will become part of Fitchburg in October of 2022. Uh, we have a joint city of Madison and City of Fitchburg staff team that's starting to meet quarterly now to prepare for uh, the town of Madison to come to our respective communities. Uh, Bear Development opened a 60 unit affordable senior housing development last year. And currently there's a 160 unit Alpine Village workforce housing, or I'm sorry, Artisan Village workforce housing that is under construction that you can see if you're driving along Highway 14. 
With the North Fish Hatchery Road reconstruction, our focus is on redevelopment and infill development as we seek to revitalize the part of Fitchburg that developed when we were still a town. The Brown Business Park land at Rolfsmeyer and Syene Road has been sold and we're working with the new owner of that uh, and we expect to see a development proposal yet this uh, probably in the fall of this year. The southeast quadrant of Post and Fish Hatchery Road offers a prime redevelopment at a signalized intersection and is uh, attracting renewed interest. And then prior to the COVID uh, crisis, Pancake Cafe had opened a second location in Bowman Plaza to bring a great breakfast and lunch place to the North Fish Hatchery Road neighborhood. With the significant traffic counts, mass transit, expanding population and economic diversity, the North Fish Hatchery Corridor is attracting renewed development interest. We welcomed the UW Credit Union last fall. Move-ins start May 1st for the Highline Senior Apartments just north of the golf course. The former juice plant site is being re redeveloped into a four-story building with 157 market rate apartments and 10,000 square feet of commercial space. And Park Bank will start redevelopment of their bank branch this summer that will also include a Starbucks coffee shop that I know some people are very excited about. With these projects, the North Fish Hatchery Road Corridor is being transformed from the town of Fitchburg of yesterday to the city of Fitchburg of today. We've been working on a visioning process for North Fish Hatchery Road with Vandewall and Associates to build upon the foundation of these projects that I just mentioned to keep the development momentum going in this important gateway to Fitchburg. We're putting the tools in place with the road reconstruction and have a tax increment district to help drive additional development throughout that, that Northern Gateway to Fitchburg. Moving to the center part of the city, just west of Seminole Highway. Oops, got a little trigger happy there. Uh, construction continues on Sub-Zero Group's $70 million Innovation and Engineering Center with completion expected in January of 2021. During normal economic times, Sub-Zero Wolf is Fitchburg's largest employer. We're looking forward to their workforce gradually returning once the safer at home is lifted and the recovery begins. Just west of Seminole Highway and south of Sub-Zero Parkway, race day events has a new headquarters while construction continues on the Hop House Brew Pub restaurant and production facility that should finish up this summer. Promega is also investing another $155 million in a component manufacturing center that is much needed as our nation looks to biotech and science companies for supplies and solutions to combat the coronavirus. Heading south of Lacey Road on the east and west sides of Seminole Highway, there are plans coming forward for the O'Brien Farm. On the west side, Edgewood College is looking to purchase 40 acres to consolidate all their athletic fields in one location. Their plans also include being part of Fitchburg's regional stormwater management system to address the problem some of the problems that we have in that intersection. On the east and west sides of Seminole Highway, EDF Renewables is partnering with Madison Gas and Electric on a 20 megawatt solar farm that also incorporates pollinator plants underneath the solar panels and will have an educational kiosk along the Badger State Trail. We're excited about both of those projects coming forward. CERTCO's new truck maintenance facility is almost ready for moving along Spoke and Sprocket Drive in the Arrowhead neighborhood. And construction will start this summer on a three-story climate-controlled security access vertical facility on the former Nedrobos property just north of Saris. And we continue to work with General Beverage on their long-term space needs. Heading further to the west of Fitchburg and Verona Road, wouldn't you know it, we opened up a brand new highway to traffic last fall and then we restrict people to safer at home. Uh, with Verona Road open, the traffic flows, and that will get even better when the final work on McKee Road is completed uh, this year. Benjamin Investments has secured another anchor tenant who will move into the third floor of their Class A office building in June that is already home to KL Engineering. And Fitchburg is proactively planning with the Anton Drive Redevelopment Study to provide us with a vision for the future development based on this new transportation infrastructure. You can see that map in the lower left-hand corner. And we're excited to announce that uh, Myers, a large commercial anchor, has an option on the former quarry site uh, north of McKee Road across from Super Target. 
They're doing their due diligence currently and working on a conceptual plan that will start to come forward uh, this summer. And they're gonna be first going to the Jamestown Neighborhood Association with that information in June. At Orchard Point, both Dwellings Home Furnishings and Goldfish Swim Academy have settled in to their new spaces in Orchard Point. And we expect to see construction start this summer on a resort style market rate senior living development behind Super Target. There is also a workforce housing development plan for south of High V, the Limestone Ridge project. But this project, while it's WIDA tax credit eligible, uh, it's on hold at the moment until more tax credits become available. But we're looking forward to having both of those housing projects uh, kind of help complete the build out in Orchard Point. Both the workforce housing and senior living developments follow key recommendations in Fitchburg's recently adopted housing plan. The Common Council created a housing advisory committee to focus on our housing needs from a healthy neighborhoods perspective and also work on implementation of this plan. At the Common Council's meeting this week on Tuesday, they approved a resolution to authorize the Dane County Housing Authority to operate in Fitchburg. So we're looking forward to that partnership uh, moving forward. Workforce ownership housing is important to meet the needs of our residents. And the final homes of residents on the park by Habitat for Humanity are building out. This development was possible with the land right down from Dane County CDBG. Our housing plan recommends that we look for strategies to develop more owner-occupied housing and utilize partnerships with organizations like Habitat. Last year, Blackhawk Church started services in their new facility, their new church east of Seminole Highway. The Stoner Prairie neighborhood continues to build up around Blackhawk Church and the Verona schools in that area. And Viridian will start to extend the infrastructure for Crescent Crossing that will include 65 single family homes and 56 twin homes at the northeast corner of Seminole Highway and Lacey Road as that whole neighborhood's continue to, to build out. At the corner of Fitch Road and Lacey Roads, Quarry Vista's final duplexes are nearing completion and are listed for sale. That's in the Verona School District. And then moving over to the Oregon School District along Nobel Drive and east of Fish Hatchery Road, single family housing construction continues in Fahey Fields. Three of the homes under construction are part of the 2020 Parade of Homes. And stay tuned for more details on how that event will occur uh, within the safety and health protocols that are available when uh, the parade happens in later June. Moving to the east side of Highway 14 and MM, Terra Vesa is off to a brisk start. There are already 25 homes under construction in this neighborhood, with some ready for occupancy. Encore Construction will also be starting uh, the Paxton Place townhomes this summer. They just got approval at the Plan Commission recently. Terra Vesa with its central location within Dane County, the smart code zoning and an emphasis on sustainability promises to be a popular neighborhood with anchored by the New Oregon Elementary School and also the Mara Postal Learning Center that will open this fall that the mayor had highlighted. We also have the Lacey Woods duplex condos that are continuing to build out on the south side of the Swan Creek subdivision north of Lacey Road. So that concludes a quick virtual tour of the development activity uh, currently happening in Fitchburg and kind of the latest updates. Uh, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email if I can ever be of assistance or if you have any questions. I think I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna send the PDF presentation to Angela and Brandon and they're gonna make it available to people that are on the uh, call today. I think, is my video back, Brandon? <laughs> Good? Okay. So thank you for all that you do for Fitchburg. Uh, the world, our country, state, and Fitchburg have all changed dramatically in the first half of 2020 as we've been hit with this health and economic crisis. My faith is really in all of you, our businesses, our entrepreneurs, and our residents. Together, you will lead us forward with perseverance and innovation to make, a, to make us become a stronger community out of this crisis. So stay safe and healthy. And I can't wait until the Safer at Home is lifted and we can all gather again at a Fitchburg Chamber Visitor Business Bureau gathering and 
have a nice cold 20 ounce beer. <laughs> Thank you. So we have time for some questions. Uh, if anyone has questions, they can um, go ahead and type them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, I do not see, and you can have questions for me, the mayor, or Mike, preferably Fitchburg economic development focused. Um, Uh, let's see. Yeah, we miss you too. And uh, anybody, I don't, I don't have any questions coming in. So maybe, um, maybe you did a great job, Mike, and answered everybody's questions. Um, we want to thank everybody for participating, and we, I'm sure we will be back, probably via a similar mm -hmm. format, maybe at the end of May, with some additional uh, updates and, and you know, put uh, our faces in front of you. Uh, for a little while longer until we can be in person. So thank you again, everyone, um, for participating. I hope you all have a great afternoon and enjoy some of the sunshine. Thank you, Mayor Richardson and Mike Zimmerman from City Hall. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> oh, Brandon wanted, okay, never mind. Goodbye.